Apple just announced a newly redesigned home app for HomeKit this year at WWDC 2022. The home app really hasn't had any major updates in many years. I installed the developer beta of iPad OS 16 so that we could check out together this new and hopefully improved home app. Let's go. Sponsored by Eve. Yo, what's up guys? For those new here, my name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Apple just kicked off their annual worldwide developer conference. Among all the big iOS and Mac announcements, there was a teeny tiny little segment about the smart home. They mostly spoke about matter, which is okay, I guess, but not really telling us anything we didn't already know. If you want more information on matter and what it's all about, basically it's the future of the smart home. You can check out this video right up here that I did earlier in the year, kind of going through all of it in more detail. Really the only update announced during the keynote for HomeKit is a newly redesigned home app. There was one other HomeKit related feature that I personally am very happy about. A lot of people may not care about this, but stick around to the end for that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at this new home app. Uh, so here we go. This is it, as you can see, quite different. We have some categories along the top, our favorites here, cameras, scenes, things are broken down a little bit differently. Now, one thing I wanna point out, I did install iPad OS beta on an old iPad. I strongly recommend most people not install developer betas, especially on any of your primary devices. So a little disclaimer there. If anything, wait until the public betas are released. And even then, if you know, don't do it unless you really have a good reason to. On the iPhone, it'll be a little different. Pretty much the same here, but you're not gonna get this sidebar. Uh, this column over here on the iPhone. So you'll have your main tabs along the bottom, which will be home automation and discover tabs, okay? So it's sort of like it is in iOS 15, but that's a major difference between iPad and iPhone. Everything else should be similar. Um, but let's go ahead and just take a look at what we have first up here. Shows you how many accessories are unresponsive. I have a lot. I do a lot of testing and things like that. Now when you're on the iPhone, you'll actually see a drop down menu of all your rooms here in list view also as another way to access your rooms. So you have your home settings, we can tap that. Pretty much the same stuff here. Um, as before, you have kind of your categories you can go through and look at stuff, hubs and bridges, uh, intercom, uh, software updates, and background. And let's see, next we have edit home view. So this is gonna allow you to move things around here, which we'll get to in a second, and then reorder section. So this is a big, nice change, I think, with this one. Uh, before, you didn't have much control over this, but you can see I have my favorites up top. I can put cameras up top or move things around however I want, my scenes. Uh, then you have all your rooms. So I do like that before you had to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get to your cameras, uh, pretty much on every view, whether you're on your home screen or, or the home tab or your room. So now you can have cameras up top, which to me makes a lot of sense. Uh, so you can re rearrange these how you want, which uh, again is nice. Uh, I would like it if you could like hide certain rooms maybe. Like I have a default room right here that uh, I'm just used for testing. I don't really want that visible here. It would be nice if you could hide stuff, but you can't. Um, but again, a little more control, so that is good. Um, all right, and then if we tap plus here, you have add accessory, add scene, add automation, add room. All those are pretty much the same, add people. This right here, if you add a resident, that's basically like inviting somebody to your home kit home. Not much has changed there, um, but you have add guest also. So this is basically if you're using a home key, right? So you can add a guest and give them an access code. Uh, I feel like this right here would be a perfect place to give us that feature that myself and so many of us want, which is like permission control. So I'd love to see them expand this section to allow me to 
maybe assign certain accessories to that guest. Maybe I just want them to be able to control my garage door, front lock, or maybe just some of the lights, you know, in a certain room uh, or whatever. That would be really nice. Or maybe some different roles here. Uh, it seems like we have a good foundation right here for that kind of functionality. So fingers crossed, uh, Apple's gonna be bringing that to us hopefully one day. Um, moving on, you have your intercom here. And I'll close that before I intercom to the rest of the house. Uh, but you can do that just like always. Uh, now moving on, here we have our kind of categories. So these are gonna align with these over here. So you can tap any of these, climate, you're gonna see the climate settings and sensors and things throughout your house. To show you the scenes um, and then the rooms with all the things that are related to that category. So kind of nice. I've got my blinds and it goes through each room and gives you everything to kind of control, you know, the climate um, in each one of those. So you know, pretty nice there. Um, you can go to lights and again, same thing, your scenes and then you're gonna go room by room. It'll tell you how many's on. It is nice that you can very easily see which lights are on, which ones are off. Uh, to turn a light on or off, you can just easily tap the icon to turn it off or on. And then if you want a little bit more control, you can tap on the bigger part and it'll open it up where you can turn it on or off. Or if it's like a dimmer, you can dim it here. And then of course, go to the settings for that. Uh, one thing to point out here, we do have some more icons, not a ton, but I think we have a few more here that we can control, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and then if we go back out to show you some of the scenes, uh, let's see, do I have a scene that's on? There we go, record video is on, of course. You can see I have a red scene right there. You know, if you wanna change this uh, edit scene, just to show you, we have some more control over our icons here with scenes, thankfully. So you can change the color of them. So this is the color that'll show when it's active, like you just saw with that one. And then we have a lot more icons. So it's definitely more than we had before. So this is nice. Always welcome, you know, more icons and colors. So good to see that. We'll go with a pink unicorn. There we go. All right, so there you go. That's uh, the icons there. And again, just kind of going through these. And of course you can go over here. I even have a water tab, which will show me, you know, the scenes that I have set up. And then of course my sprinklers and my faucets and things like that. And yeah, so that is the categories there again, over here or up there. Um, and it doesn't look like you can control those. I think those are gonna be set no matter what, kind of showing you the status, so that kind of replaces the current status section, I think. Although it doesn't show me sensors right here, which is a bit odd, I feel like. Um, but when I go to that reorder section, um, I'm not seeing that part there. So that is gonna be default, it looks like, as of now. Uh, then of course, favorites. These are our favorite accessories. So you can choose any of your accessories and put them here as favorites. You can rearrange them. Let's go and talk about that. So you can tap and hold on a tile to rearrange it, or you can tap edit home view, and then you can kind of click and drag. Well, maybe it's easier without the pencil. Kind of move things around. One thing that's a bit interesting, this is all still very buggy, but when you move it around, you see that little icon right there. If I tap on that, it should change the size of the tile. And I don't think that's working for the tile or for the favorites view, it looks like. So um, tap done. But if I go down here, let's choose one of my accessories. Let's go with the Ecobee in my loft. We'll choose um, edit home view. If I move that around and then tap on that. You can see it makes it bigger. One thing I'd love to see, so I did that right here with my Apple TV and my HomePod. One thing I'd love to see is to get some more information here in this section. Uh, maybe what's playing on the TV or what's playing on the HomePod would be awesome if they could add that in uh, right there. But nice that you can kind of make some icons bigger uh, if you want them to kind of be more prominent. 
And then we have our camera section. So this is really nice that you have this kind of grid view. If you drag, click and drag and move them around, uh, they're gonna kind of reorder. It looks like every you know fourth one or whatever will be big, and then a couple will be smaller in between. If you tap on one, let's tap on my front porch. Oh, I'm still in, still in wiggle mode. Tap on the front porch. It's gonna open up the camera just like we're used to. You have your talk if your camera supports two-way audio. You have your HomeKit Secure Video clips if your camera supports HomeKit Secure Video. You can tap on that to get access to the surrounding or relevant accessories also. And uh, that's about it for the camera view. And if we close that, uh, one thing I do like is that you can tap and hold on a camera and you can remove it from the home screen. So you can tap don't show in home view. So that's nice if you just want certain cameras right here. I do like that. You can remove that and there you go. You can tap cameras right there to quickly jump in and see all your cameras. So these are snapshots it looks like, but um, that is nice to see. I like that. Same thing if you tap on scenes, you can jump and see all your scenes at a quick glance. And um, this is how you'll also get to your room. So on the iPad, again, you have your rooms over here you can access in the column, but if you don't wanna do that, or if you're on an iPhone, you'll have to access your rooms by tapping the room. So if I tap on front foyer, it'll open that up. You know, you have your temperature settings and stuff like that. Um, what I, I think that's really hard to read right there, the temperature. I don't like that. That just doesn't make much sense. So hopefully they'll change that. That's a lot easier to read than that little thing right there. That almost doesn't make much sense to me. We have our automation tab here that is pretty much the same as before. We add an automation. Uh, not much it looks like has changed right here. So pretty much same thing. We have the same conditions here um, as before. It doesn't look like anything. Um, so you got time and people conditions. Nothing new there, unfortunately, so far. But this is still beta and, you know, beta one. And hopefully we'll see a lot of um, improvements. And you have your discover tab, which is, you know, just for like beginners to get a little more information and stuff. None of us really use it once you've started. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the iPad. Big thanks to Eve for sponsoring today's video. Eve makes a number of great privacy focused products that work exclusively for HomeKit. And they are one of the leading companies making products that support HomeKit over Thread and soon to be Matter. You know, Matter, the future of the smart home. They kept talking about it at the WWDC keynote. Anyways, Eve is one of the companies that has been, you know, on the forefront of all this and Eve's products will be compatible with Matter, making them really future proof. I've been a big fan of Eve and all their products for a long time and they're definitely worth taking a look at for any home kit enthusiasts out there. Check out the link below for more on Eve and Matter. And again, thanks to Eve for supporting the channel. Earlier I mentioned an update that came out of the keynote that I'm excited about. I understand this one doesn't probably excite everyone, but Apple has announced that with iOS 16, children can be both invited to use the home app and utilize home keys on their Apple Watch. So my daughter has an Apple Watch. This is not paired to an iPhone. And really my biggest complaint with HomeKey is that she could not utilize this feature. I was really looking forward to her being able to use this, you know, on her Apple Watch to unlock the door when she comes home and stuff. So I'm very glad to see this feature coming to those children's devices that are set up using family sharing. Let me know down below what you think about this newly designed Home app. Are you happy about it? Do you care? Do you just want a new big HomePod instead? Don't forget to subscribe for new HomeKit videos every Sunday and, and hopefully I'll see you in the chat during this week's live stream on Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.